Yeah, no. I miss talking to you guys. This week was supposed to be another mini tutorial, but you know, I miss talking to you guys through these full length videos, so I think I'm gonna switch back to making these full length videos and maybe do a couple of mini tutorials on the side. But anyway, today's topic is really interesting because Discord member Jewel mentioned how Crito is coming out with a 5.1 upgrade patch. Now, uh, what? <laughs> I've been so out of the loop uh, recently that I didn't even know they were working on a 5.1 let alone is about to be released but today we're going to take a look at the second beta version of Critter 5.1. For those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, Critter is actually a free open source digital painting software and it has all of the possible features you could probably want. I used to paint on Photoshop, I have done for years, until I tried Critter and I've never looked back since. If you guys remember the very first video I did at the start of this year was about the new Critter 5.0 and it was an in-depth review of the software, all of the new features and you know all the cool stuff you could do on it. Critter 5.1 has even more amazing new features and loads of little tweaks, particularly concerning how you fill the layers and the eraser tool. We're gonna break it all down today and I am of course using the beta 2 version of Critter 5.1 and because it's still in beta stage, we're gonna probably encounter some um, bugs and issues with it, but I just wanna talk about it and get a jump on all of the new stuff, okay? As always, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe it helps the channel out so so much but without much further ado if you're ready to nerd out with me let's take a look at Critter 5.1 the very first thing I did was pour over the release notes The very first paragraph mentions how this release is all about smaller improvements and technical polish, updates to usability across the board, improved file format handling and changes to the selection and fill tools. So let's take a look at these in order. While there are loads of little improvements and tweaks, today I want to focus on the ones that actually make a difference to the painting process. First off, there are a couple of new settings in the UI configuration windows. You can now have smooth zoom as well as you can use a different brush head for your eraser. Let's look at the zoom. So in previous versions, when you zoomed in or out, there were very specific percentages of zoom you could get. So here with the older settings, I'm going to start at 100% and scroll down. You'll see that the zoom goes from 100% to 66.7, then 50, then 33.3 and so on. Let's now enable smooth zoom. You can do this by going into settings, configure critter, and in the general tab, look for the tool sub tab. Here at the bottom of the second list, you'll see the option that says enable smooth zoom. I'm gonna select that and hit okay. Let's go back to 100% and scroll down to zoom out again. Now you'll see that rather than going straight to 66.7%, there's three extra steps in between. Basically, you're able to zoom in and out a lot smoother, which is always nice. This is one of those features that you don't even know you're missing until they put it in and then you're like, damn, I didn't even know I needed this. Also, within the general tab, you have a new panel within the very first cursor sub tab. You'll see that there is now an entire menu down there to change up the cursor for the eraser. You want to check the box that says use separate settings for eraser. And now you can customize the look and feel of the cursor when the eraser tool is selected. I'm going to change the color and make sure that the eraser icon shows up next to the cursor. 
Why is this an important setting? Let me ask you a question. How many times have you been painting on a brand new layer and the paint just won't show up and then you worry you're painting on a mask or your opacity is turned all the way down or you're using a blender brush until you do the scribble test and realize actually I'm using the eraser and then you have to make sure to double and triple check you've toggled back to the brush because you can't tell the difference until you actually paint with it. Now I don't ever have to do that scribble test because I can just look at my cursor and know that my eraser is selected. Again, it's one of those little features that you didn't even know you needed until you get it. And then you're like, how did I live without this? For those of you who do a lot of final edits using color channels, you can also now change the levels per channel. So here I'm just going to do a bunch of scribbles using red, green and blue. Now I can open the channels tab, select a random one, let's say blue, and adjust the levels of only the blue channel. So I'm going to brighten up all the blues and it will leave the reds and greens completely alone. I think this is a very base level alternative to the one thing that I miss desperately about Photoshop and that is the hue saturation function where you could change the hue saturation and lightness of some individual hues so like I could grab just the greens and desaturate them or just the reds and lighten them up I guess this channel specific levels adjustment allows us to do just the lightness bit but specific to red green and blue Speaking of, they've now added the hue sat menu to the adjustment window. So now instead of having plain bars and having to slide back and forth and looking at the painting to see the difference, you can click exactly where you want to shift the hue saturation and value. I must say though, the hue bar shifting every time I click somewhere is very disconcerting. Do you guys know how to make it stop? I'm a fixed sign in Leo season. I can't cope with this constant shifting. However, the biggest change with this update is how the fill tool has been expanded. So if you've watched me paint before, you know that once I have my sketch down, I select the boundaries of my character with the Bezier Curve Select tool and then fill it in with a flat color to block it out. This allows me to use a clipping group and basically make sure that I'm always painting within the lines. However, Chris can now take care of that for you. There is now a toolbar button right next to the Paint Bucket tool and it is called the Enclose and Fill tool. Clicking on it opens up a bunch of options in the tool options window. Before going into the details, here's an overall look at what it does. As you can see, I've drawn a bunch of shapes here. See so now I want to fill them all with a flat color. With the same layer selected, if I grab the enclose and fill tool, it is set to a lasso selector by default. I'm going to go around the entire group of shapes and boom, it has filled the whole thing without going outside the lines. Let's look at all these options though. First off, the enclosing method is basically a select tool. You can use whatever selector you prefer. For this example, I'm gonna use the rectangle encloser. Under what to fill, here's where the tool really shines. So by default, it is set to all regions, meaning I can select it all and it will paint over everything, including the lines. However, there is an option called transparent regions. If I select that, one and then drag my enclosing square around. Now it's left my lines alone and only fills the transparent areas. How cool is that? Now, if you're someone that works with a lot of line art or comic style work, this is going to be an absolute blessing when it comes to your flats because you never have to use a bezier curve again. Here's the thing, I'm notoriously bad at line art. It doesn't come naturally to me, never has. I use very sketchy sketches. So while painting my flats, I try to use this tool and here's how it turned out. Just to give Krita the best possible shot of this, I grabbed a line art brush and did as clean of a layer as I possibly could. And then I tried to use the lasso enclosing method, selecting transparent regions. And it actually did a surprisingly good job. The only two areas that it missed were the ones that I didn't enclose properly. So like, it worked. 
How cool is that? Oh my gosh. Now, I know what you're thinking. How can you preserve the line art if it's going to paint over it? Well, my friend, that is where the reference option down here comes in. By default, it is set to only select the enclosing lines from the current layer. If, however, I wanted to do a new layer with flats underneath my lines, I can set the reference to either come from a merged copy of all the layers. This is great if you have lines against a flat background. Make sure what to fill is set to all regions though or and this one is way better you can use a color tag to select your specific line art layer so if I hit the tag button and select blue I can then tag my line art layer to also be blue and then Krita is going to recognize that tag and use that to fill in the selection let me explain this a little better so in this painting I want that to be a bird as well just to illustrate this I'm going to put the lines for the bird on its own layer and give it a red tag. So if I try to enclose and fill using the layer tagged red, it will fill the bird. But if I pick the layer tagged blue, there are no enclosed spaces in that area on the blue layer, so it's not going to fill anything at all. I hope all of that made sense. So if you have batches of line art that overlap and such, this is an amazing extra functionality. And the final update I want to talk about in depth today is the layers. You can now select multiple layers and use the cut, copy, paste and delete function on all of them all at once. I'm going to select both the fill layer and the line art layer here. When I make a lasso selection and hit Ctrl X, you can see that it will cut that selection out of both layers. And if I hit Ctrl V, it pastes said selection as two new layers. However, you still still can't select multiple layers and transform them together unless you make a quick group, so that's a bit of a bummer. There's a couple more little updates that I personally don't use, but some of you guys might. You can now import Photoshop files and it will preserve the color labels. There is better support for WebP images and TIFF files. There's updates to the pop-up palette where your recent brushes are more dynamically arranged. And the rotation ring now snaps every 15 degrees. There's updates to the recorder window where you can choose to hold the last frame and even show the end result at the beginning. There's a bunch more updates, but I don't want this video to be just a straight up read through of the patch notes so i'll leave a link to the page in the description below and you guys can check it out in your own time So there we go. All in all, I am personally super excited about the updates to the fill tool. It's gonna save me so much time blocking in all the flats for my characters and that separate brush head for the eraser tool. I cannot tell you how many times I've accidentally erased stuff off my layers and then realized the brush tool wasn't even toggled on. So that's an exciting development for sure. Honestly though, this hasn't been a massive, massive update to the painting process for me personally, but I guess it wasn't supposed to be it's just a quick little update on some efficiency and some tweaks to help you paint faster I guess rather than better um, but hey if you do a lot of line art and coloring within the lines this will be a really good update for you if you guys have enjoyed this video then please remember to like and subscribe it helps the channel out so so much um, will you be getting the 5.1 beta or are you happy sticking to Crater 5.0 let me know in the comments below I am still rolling out the art and chill tutorials every single week for all of my patrons over on patreon so if that's something you haven't checked out yet and you're interested in i will leave a link to my patreon page in the description below or you can just come say hi on instagram and discord i'll leave links to those down below as well but with all of that said thank you so so much for hanging out with me today i hope you've enjoyed it as much as i have check out some more videos up here and i'll see you guys on the next one bye